All right, so here is a question talking about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So eigenvalues are really important, and so it's important to know basic facts about them and how you can go about proving basic facts about them. And so this is a good exercise for just going through some facts about eigenvalues. And I do really like this thing that the author has done where he uses the abbreviation EV for eigenvector and EW for eigenvalue. Apparently this comes from German, um, but it saves a lot of writing, especially like if you're taking notes during class and you, you're talking about eigenvectors and eigenvalues, it's just, if you, it, it saves a lot of space. Um, but yeah, in talking, it's no, it's no big deal. So I'll say eigenvector and eigenvalue. Okay, so the first part is that if lambda is an eigenvalue of a, and you have some complex constant mu, then lambda minus mu is an eigenvector of a minus mu times i. And typically, what you do for these problems is, if you're given an eigenvalue, then you choose a corresponding eigenvector, or conversely, if you're given an eigenvector, you choose a corresponding eigenvalue, and then you just do some calculations involving the eigenvector and the eigenvalue. So here, um, we sort of do that. We're given an eigenvalue lambda, so let's suppose x is an eigenvector. So that means that a times x equals lambda times x. Okay, so then we want to prove that lambda minus mu is an eigenvalue of a minus mu i. So let's take a minus mu i of x. Um, we don't really have any other vectors to choose, so if we want to prove that this is an eigenvalue of this, then maybe the same eigenvector will work. Um, I, it, I, I guess there's no real reason to think at the beginning that this should work, but it, I mean, it's something worth trying, so you try it and it works out. So we do this and we get ax minus, well, mu times the identity matrix times x is just mu times x, so we get but ax is lambda x, so we get lambda x minus mu x, and so you factor out the x, and you get lambda minus mu. So, therefore, lambda minus mu is an eigenvalue of a minus mu i, and in particular, it has an eigenvector x. The eigenvectors corresponding with lambda minus mu are the same as the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda. And also, again, you have um, multiple choices for your eigenvector, um, the only constraint is that they're non-zero vectors. All right, so that's the first one. Let's move on. If a is real and lambda is an eigenvalue of a, then also minus lambda is an eigenvalue of a. Okay, so we're, in this example, a is just some vector. Or no, a is just some matrix. There's no Hermitian-ness. Okay, so in this example, well, Let's just, this is a really easy example because you just take A to be the one by one matrix whose only entry is one, then its only eigenvalue is lambda equals one because if you take AX equals, yeah, it's, it's basically the, the one by one identity matrix and its only eigenvalue is one and that's its only eigenvalue. So minus one is not an eigenvalue. And so there you go, because if, if minus one were an eigenvalue, then you'd have, let's see here, ax equals lambda x, so minus x, but a is just the one by one vector who's one, and so it'd be x equals minus x, and so this would imply that x is the zero vector, the, the zero one dimensional vector, um, but it can't be because eigenvectors are not allowed to be the zero vector. Okay, so that's false. For C, um, okay, so if A is real, lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then so is the complex conjugate of lambda. And this actually is true. So the way that we take this is you basically, again, like I said, you choose an eigenvector, um, x, and then you take this equation, we have ax equals lambda x, and you just take the complex conjugate of this entire equation. And you get ax equals lambda x. And a is a real matrix, so the complex conjugate of the matrix a is just the matrix a itself. 
And so therefore, what this equation says is that the complex conjugate of x is a non, well, certainly it's non-zero since x is non-zero. And so therefore, it is an eigenvector of a with corresponding eigenvalue lambda bar. And thus, lambda bar is an eigenvalue of a, and in particular, its corresponding eigenvector is the complex conjugate of x. All right, let's move on to some others. So um, here, OK, so if lambda is an eigenvalue of a and a is non-singular, then lambda inverse is an eigenvalue of a inverse. And there's an interesting thing here, because I think like th this is generally going to be a true statement. The only trick is that what if lambda is the z is just 0? Because 0 can be an eigenvalue. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. I think I messed this up. If lambda is 0, not OK. A matrix is invertible if and only if it has 0 as an eigenvalue. So we actually know that um, we actually know that 0 is not an eigenvalue of A. And we know that because A is non-singular. So what this should say is, um, first of all, um, lambda is not equal to 0 because lambda Lambda, OK, here's what it should say. Lambda is not equal to 0 because A is an invertible matrix. OK, so let x be an eigenve eigenvector for, uh, for lambda. Then Ax equals lambda x. And this is equivalent to, well, you just take A inverse of both sides, and you get A inverse Ax equals A inverse lambda x. Um, but we reduce this a inverse a, that's just the identity matrix, so we just get x equals lambda a inverse x. And then because the lambda is not zero, we can divide both sides of this equation by lambda, and we get lambda inverse x equals a inverse x. And that's, this means that lambda inverse is an eigenvalue of a with corresponding eigenvector x. Okay, so this is a really important fact, and this is um, good to know. And it's also not too difficult to prove. OK. So as I discussed above, and, and that's actually, now that I think about it, that might be an interesting thing to go through, is that um, prove that a matrix is non-singular if and only if it has 0 as an eigenvalue. But anyways, let's move on to part E. So if I, all the eigenvalues of A are 0, then A must be the 0 matrix. Um, and this is false. Um, we know that if all the eigenvalues of A are 0, then it's going to be not invertible, but that doesn't say anything about A being 0. And so the example is A is 0, 1, 0, 0. And so let suppose lambda is an eigenvalue of A with eigenvector x. So basically what we're doing now is we're trying to find what the eigenvalues of this are. OK, so we know AX equals lambda x. And so if we write this equation out, we have um, 0, 1, 0, 0 times x1, x2 equals lambda x1, lambda x2. That's what ax equals lambda x is, can be written as if we let x be the matrix, or the, if we write the vector x as x1, x2. And this system is the exact same as, OK, so the first we'll get x2 equals lambda x1, and then we'll get 0 equals lambda x2. OK, and that's, that's what we've written here. OK, so the second equation tells us that either lambda has to be 0 or x2 is 0. OK, so if x2 is 0, then the first equation reads lambda x1 is 0. And in this, in this case, x1 cannot be 0, because if x1 were 0, we've already assumed that x2 is 0, and so then in this case, x is the 0 vector, which is not allowed. So since x must be a non-zero vector, it must be the case that lambda equals 0, because lambda 1 cannot be 0.
So either lambda equals zero or this other thing, but in this other case, lambda equals zero. So lambda is going to be zero. So we know that all of the eigenvalues, any eigenvalue of A must be zero, but A is not the zero matrix. And so therefore, the statement of part E is false. Okay, and so now we move on to part F. If lambda is an eigenvalue of a Hermitian matrix A, then the magnitude of lambda is, or the absolute value of lambda is a singular value of A. And this is actually true because it, it's given by theorem 5.5, um, which tells us that if A is Hermitian, then it, the singular values of A are precisely the absolute values of the eigenvalues of A. So this, actually, we don't really do any work. This is just a restatement of a, of a theorem from earlier in the textbook. I mean, it's way earlier, but it's earlier. Okay, now we move on to the last one, which is if A is diagonalizable and all of its eigenvalues are equal, then A is diagonal. Okay, so let's do this. So suppose that A is diagonalizable and all of its eigenvalues are equal. Then if A, to say that A is diagonalizable, that means that A can be written as X times lambda times X inverse, where X is invertible and lambda is diagonal. That's just the definition of a diagonalizable matrix. Okay, but we know that all the diagonal entries of of capital lambda must be. Um, let's see here. We also know that this isn't. This is also referred to as the eigenvalue decomposition, because um, the diagonal entries of lambda are going to be the eigenvalues of a. Well. Yeah, the diagonal entries of lambda are the eigenvalues of A, and so all diagonal entries of lambda are equal. And therefore, we can write lambda, or capital lambda, the matrix, as lowercase lambda times i for some constant lambda. And this constant lambda is going to be the eigenvalues of A. And so then we have a equals x lambda x inverse, which is x times lowercase lambda times the identity matrix times x inverse. But now the identity matrix drops out and we pull the lambda out front, and then the x and the x inverse are left next to each other. And so we just have lambda times i. And so then a itself must be diagonal. And furthermore, a is equal to lambda times i, where lambda is precisely all the eigenvalues of a. And so there we go. And yeah, so all of these questions were pretty short, just a few lines in the proofs, and that's why they grouped a whole bunch of these together. But hopefully these give you an idea of how to go about solving problems involving eigenvalues and eigenvectors.